So in this video, I'm going to be covering the, the buildup of uh, flexible lines or the construction of flexible lines, uh, the pressure ratings of flexible lines, and also how to size flexible lines. So in your PowerPoint, uh, you're going to want to flip to flexible hoses directly after the, the rigid hose there. Um, and then also you're going to want to have in your, um, uh, I'm going to, I want to sh make sure you guys knew how to find this because I'm not sure everybody's actually looking at this. In your course documents tab, if you go to the second one down here, it's called ch uh, 8083 chapter seven. Uh, if, if you don't even know where that is by now, you're uh, uh, probably not sitting very good in this class as far as your grade goes, but uh, there's a lot of valuable information, actually much needed information in there to solve some of the questions in this section. But I just wanted to make sure everybody knew how to get to this. I'm gonna bring it up and then I'm also gonna go ahead and skip to the part where it starts talking about flexible lines because we're gonna be kind of jumping around here as far as this uh, uh, demonstration goes. So flexible lines is directly after rigid lines. It starts on page, um, oops, I overshot it. Let's go back a little bit. Right here, so it's 7-17, it talks about flexible lines. So you're gonna need that, 8083, chapter seven, uh, page 7-17, and then, um, we won't need this. And then the uh, flexible construction hose of the uh, hoses right here. All right, let's start talking about this. So on a flexible hose, you have three major parts. You have the inner liner, the reinforcement layer, and the outer cover. I'm going to go to a picture of one, uh, like a cross-sectional view, so help explain this. So here we're going to start with a low-pressure hose because it's, it's the least amount of working parts here. It's got all three parts. It's got the inner liner. Now, the very important thing about the inner liner is that it needs to be compatible with the fluid going through the liner. Otherwise, what will end up happening is that the tube will deteriorate on the inside. And you won't know it because the outside will look just fine. And the particles that are breaking down go, are going to be going into the, uh, the system, whether it's fuel, oil, hydraulic fluid. It's all bad to have contaminants into it. So the inner liner needs to be compatible with the fluid going through it. Then you're going to have some type of reinforcement on the inner liner. Um, I like to compare this one to the garden hose. So if, I don't know if you've ever... Uh, dissected a garden hose or cut a garden hose off, but you might notice it has basically an inner liner and then it's got like kind of like cotton inside of it. That's what its reinforcement is. And then and it has an outer layer there. So the three major parts, let's go back to it. The inner liner is what the fluid actually touches. That's what's the inside, the most inner part. Then how it's reinforced is going to determine its strength. And we're going to go through three different ways of reinforcing here in a second. And then the outer cover protects the hose from actual physical damage like chafing or heat or things like that. All right, so as far as sizing goes, when we talked about rigid lines last week, we uh, were discussing how outside diameters, how they're sized in the 16-inch increments or 1 16th of an inch increments. Well, with flexible lines, it's still 16th of an inch increments, but it's done from the inside. Primarily, the reason why is because the flexible hose, uh, again, is going to be determined by how much reinforcement it has. And the more reinforcement it has, the bigger the, the line's going to be. So they can't size it by the outside. They have to size it by the inside diameter. And of course, it's approximate because it's going to be made of some kind of rubbery material that'll stretch. All right. So here's the low, medium, high pressure lines dissected. And I'm going to be flipping back and forth to this, but uh, let's go through each size line or each pressure rating line at a time. Uh, so low pressure line, any line that's 250 PSI or below. The reason why it's uh, limited to, to low pressures is because it's not very strong. And we're going to see why. The, the low pressure line has a inner liner. It has a reinforcement layer, but the reinforcement layer is simply just a cotton braid, like almost like a t-shirt type material. Uh, cotton braid is its reinforcement and then has the outer outer liner there. So if cotton's the only thing reinforcing it, it's not, not much stopping it from it wanting to expand and pop. So that's why it's limited to 250 PSI. Used on what we call low pressure system. It'll be identified by a smooth outer covering. So if you ever grab one and it's got a smooth outer covering, it very well could be the low pressure line. So inner liner, cotton braiding, smooth outer layer is identified to the low pressure line. The next one is called the medium pressure line. That's the one we're going to be doing all of our projects on. Um, the medium pressure line is um, it's constructed in the same fashion as the low pressure line. It's got the inner liner. Sometimes it does have a cotton braid. Uh, normally it does. So it's got the inner liner and a cotton braid, just like the low pressure. But what's different is now they're going to put a layer of steel uh, steel braiding to help make it a little bit stronger. The reinforcement layer has one one additional reinforcement layer than the lo uh, low pressure did. 
And then another difference to the low pressure is on its outer covering, it's going to be a rough in appearance. Uh, and you guys will get the experience that because you're going to work with the uh, medium pressure and you're going to build a medium pressure line in class and install the fittings and pressure check, pressure check it and all those different things. But I wanted to make sure I, I covered what a medium pressure line was. And again, it's got the smooth inner liner, cotton braid, metal braid, and then rough outer covering. The next one is called a high pressure line. Now a high pressure line uh, is got even more reinforcement, obviously, as you would expect, than a low pressure and a medium pressure. So for example, it's got the inner liner. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't have a cotton braid, but whether it does or doesn't, doesn't matter. It's still got two layers of steel. So on a, on a medium pressure line, you only have one layer of steel. So now we're adding a, uh, another layer of steel to reinforce the, um, the, the tubing. So what that's going to do is make it a little stronger. Now it can carry up to 3,000 PSI where the medium pressure is up to 1,500. And then on the outer liner of this, it's smooth, just like the, the low pressure. So then somebody might ask, well, how am I going to know the difference between low and high pressure if they both have a smooth outer covering? Well, it's pretty easy to tell. A uh, low pressure hose will be very flimsy, easy to bend where a high pressure hose has got two layers of steel in it, so it's gonna be a lot stiffer. That's an easy way to tell if you have both of them. But later on, in later video, we're gonna learn how you can tell by the part number that's gonna be written on the side of it is another way to tell low, medium, or high pressure. But you, a lot of times, can tell by, by its dissection or, or uh, cutting it open and seeing what kind of parts it has in it, you can tell low, medium, or high pressure, okay? Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the inner liner in specific, uh, the materials that it can be constructed of. There's four of them we're going to talk about. And if you go into, this is where 8083 is going to come into handy here. Uh, let me see if I can get this to zoom in a little bit over here. Um, there it is. So uh, let's zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see this. It's talking about here about the common materials that the hose is constructed of as far as the inner liner goes. And... Remember how I mentioned how the inner liner needs to be compatible with the material that's going through it? Well, here's, here's why. So some of the common materials we're going to have in aviation are petroleum-based products like fuel and oil and hydraulic fluid, at least some of your hydraulic fluids. We're going to have some hydraulic flu fluids that are called phosphate ester-based fluids. And then you're going to have, some of them are just going to be air lines, uh, also known as pneumatic lines. Um, so there's going to be a lot of different uh, things flowing through these lines. So let's talk about some of the common materials and what they're commonly used for. First one I wanted to cover is called Buna N. Buna N is a synthetic rubber compound that has a really good resistance to petroleum products, um, but it cannot be used with what we call SkyDraw, phosphate ester-based fluid. So it's really good for petroleum-based like fuels and oils and things like that. The next one is called neoprene. If the inner liner, you guys may have heard of neoprene, they make life vests and um, uh, ski jackets like water skiing jackets and, and wetsuits and things out of that neoprene material. Uh, but neoprene is also a synthetic rubber compound, uh, has an acetylene base in it. Um, it does have a resistance petroleum products, but not as good as the Buna N, so that one would be better it's suited. Uh, also, you cannot use it for uh, SkyDraw products or, or what we know as phosphate ester based hydraulic fluid, which is common to the commercial jet type aircraft. That's the type of hydraulic fluid they use, and we're going to talk about that later, anyways. Butyl is the third one. Now that one is made from uh, petroleum uh, products. It is definitely a good one for hydraulic fluid uh, known as SkyDraw, but because it's petroleum based in its making, uh, you don't want to use it for petroleum products so it'll break down. So uh, the third one we talked about called Butyl is definitely good for SkyDraw, phosphate ester based fluid, but not so great for petroleum products. Uh, the last one I wanted to talk about is the one that's latest and greatest and the best of all. Uh, by the way, here it, it reinforces the low, medium, high pressure ranges for hydraulic lines. Uh, so if you can't find that information, it's right there. There's a worksheet question about that. And we'll tomorrow be talking about the hose identifications. I'm going to skip that right now. But I want to talk about this miracle stuff called Teflon. Teflon uh, has a, is it made by a company called DuPont and it's also, it's got a chemical name, a really long, really hard to say, tetrafluoroethylene resin, something like that. Uh, good thing about Teflon, good operating range, compatible with almost every, uh, system agent you can use. It, uh, has, it's slick stuff. So it has very minimum, uh, resistance to fluid flow. It doesn't expand very much under pressure. That's what it's talking about. It has less volumetric expansion than rubber. Its shelf life is almost limitless, so you're going to say, well, if it's greatest, then 
for everything, why don't they make it on every single line? And two couple of reasons. One is it's, it's cost. It's not very uh, cheap. And the uh, other one is its biggest uh, disadvantage is that um, this stuff takes a set. So when they make the line, like for the instance, this one here, because it has this shape to it, when it gets installed in the aircraft or engine or wherever it's going, it has to maintain that shape. Uh, it's so sensitive that they don't like to bend these outside of the shape that it's manufactured in. So they ship it with a support wire on there. And then when they put it in the engine, it'll match that same configuration. You don't want to take it against that. That's called a set. So you don't want to uh, fight the set when you're installing a, uh, the Teflon hose. So uh, again, let's recap everything we've talked about today. This is the end of the, uh, the video here. I just want to kind of recap. So I'm going to go back to the beginning here. We talked about the difference between construction of a low, medium, and high pressure hose. Um, basically the inner liners uh, uh, that we talked about, the four materials that can be manufactured uh, or be used to manufacture the inner liner. We talked about how the different reinforcement layers will determine its strength rating between low, medium, and high pressure, whether it just has one layer of cotton, whether it has one layer of steel or two layers of steel. What the outer coating would, covering would look like on all three of those. We talked about how flexible hose is sized in 16th inch diameter. On the inside diameter, uh, I, I explained these three uh, illustrations here in the, the cross-sectional view of the low, medium, and high pressure. And this really gives a good shot of the low pressure, just the one layer of cotton, uh, the medium pressure, the layer of cotton, and the steel, and then the high pressure, the two layers of, of steel braiding. Um, and then we talked about, uh, uh, I went through all three of these, the low, the medium, high pressure. And then we talked about, and, and here is the uh, information for the Teflon on the PowerPoint but it goes way more in detail on the 8083, so I wanna make sure I covered that. But the Teflon hose is identified by the stainless steel wire braiding. Uh, that's one thing I did forget to cover. The uh, outer covering on a Teflon hose, it'll be stainless steel. It's very easy to identify a Teflon hose because all the other three look like rubber, whether it be smooth or rough on the outside, where a Teflon hose will look like stainless steel on the outside, uh, braided stainless steel. And again, I've talked about it. It's, it's definitely strong, good stuff, slick stuff. Uh, but like I said, it will perform or cause a set uh, after prolonged use. All right, you guys. Um, hopefully you're watching these videos. This will help you uh, substantially on the worksheets and the test. Again, uh, stay safe, you guys. Wash those hands. Uh, be careful.